Welcome to Orla Outlook. I'm Jeremiah Jackson here with Coach Ernst. Now, first off, Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Now, uh, a tough loss at home this last Saturday against Malone. You know, what are some things you guys took from that game? Boy, missed opportunities, uh, you know, but it happens. I think it's, uh, you know, when you lose a game like that, you, know, you, you, you tend to find yourself looking back at all the opportunities throughout a game that, you know, you kind of left there on the table. And uh, you know, with about five, six minutes to play in the game, we had a nine-point lead, and we got to the free throw line a couple times, and we didn't cash in. And, and we actually had gotten a few stops. We were bringing our, our front-line guys back onto the floor, so they were well-rested. Really, we were in great position to close that game out. And uh, between missed free throws and turnovers down the stretch, um, you know, you just can't come, overcome those things, whether it's at home or away. Uh, you know, certainly in the first half, the problem was rebounding. Um, but as the game wore on, we actually rebounded reasonably well until the last play of the game. Yeah. Now, you know, looking to your next opponent, Thomas Moore, you know, Thomas Moore coming in 14 and 9 and 9 and 6 in conference, you know, what are some of the things you guys see from them? Yeah. Well, they're new to the league this year, and I think uh, sometimes that, that can be a real positive for you because a lot of teams don't know your personnel very well. They don't know your style very well. Um, you know, so I think it's taken some teams in this league some time, including us, uh, to kind of get used to because they run a style of offense called the Princeton offense. Um, no, no one really in our league runs that offense other than them. So it does create some issues, but, you know, we did a real good job against them the first time around, held them to 47 points, but it was the first game of the season that they had played without their starting center. So they had to juggle their lineup, and anyone that knows the Princeton offense, the center is actually, in some ways, people call them the point guard. They, okay. they typically lead the other team in assists, which is odd. You know, because a basic offense, the point guard's going to lead the other the team in assists. But with the Princeton offense, they catch the ball at the high post a lot, and then they decide which direction we're going and what cuts are going to happen. And so they lead the – without your center and you run the Princeton offense, it makes a big impact. Mm -hmm. So they had to play a backup center. Um, you know, I, I think it impacted them a little more than, than most teams – so I take that into account. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not to take anything away from our defense. I thought we did a lot of good things. Uh, you know, but certainly the challenge tonight is going to be a little more. Yeah. And you talked about them missing their starting center in the first matchup. You know, how does that work for you guys as far as, like, game planning? Well, we didn't know he was going to be missing until literally the, the warm-ups began. And, okay. and he wasn't in the book and he wasn't on the floor. He was sick that night. Now, what's interesting, Jeremiah, is he's no longer part of the team. And this happened just the last game. So here in the last, this week, we've prepped thinking he was going to play until about Tuesday. Yeah. And so then we said, okay. Now, I will say this. They, they've been playing some other bigs since our game. So I think they're a little better uh, prepared to play without him than they were the first time we played him. Um, you know, so they've got a lot of weapons, and I think the key for them is to find some comfort so that they can take advantage of their weapons regardless of who they put on the floor. Yeah, and they're currently on a two-game winning streak, you know, coming in with a lot of confidence as well, you know, having multiple double-digit scores in their last couple of games, you know, to help out, you know, guys such as Rhea Jolly, who's yeah. kind of averaging double figures right now, you know. How can you contain them offensively? Well, I think, you know, Reed Jolly's the key. Um, you know, he's, he's a multi-level uh, scorer, you know. In basketball, we like to say a three-level scorer. He'll score with his back to the basket. He'll score mid-range, and he'll score from the three-point line. So you have to have versatile defenders, someone strong enough, because he goes about 6'5", 215. So he's a physical block player uh, down on the block. But he's quick enough off the dribble to beat you off the dribble if you just put girth on him. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where that usually guys that average a lot of points, it's because they score on all three levels. So 
Ironically enough, our probably our best suited defenders are true freshman Will Aljancic, and he guarded him the first time, and he's going to get that assignment again. But we're going to need to bring some help. We're going to know who to help off of, um, you know, and that's always the challenge. How can you cage guys up? And uh, he's going to get his points because they're going to run a lot of things for him. Yeah. You know, we just have to to do a good job of guard, maybe guarding their other guys. So, so that they're not a team that has you know three guys scoring 15 plus then you have your then you have problems yeah you know we just spoke about Reed Jolly you know we spoke about rebounding as well you know throughout the whole season you know we're going to be the keys to this game yeah um well I think anytime you go on the road energy is always number one I always put that number one because you know if you don't have that then nothing else I say really matters yeah I think number two um Again, when you go on the road, you have to play a different style. You have to be poised. You know, we've won our last three road games, which I would have never guessed we could do a couple weeks ago. But I think our last game is a great example, Tiffin. You know, we didn't get caught up in falling behind the ebbs and flows of the game. You know, you have to stick to your game plan. You can't allow the, the home crowd to make a big impact. And you just do that by being consistently poised. So that'd be number two. And then I think finally, we have to execute our offense against a very good defensive team, knowing we're not going to be able to break them down in the first couple passes. Mm -hmm. And if we take shots early in possessions, chances are they're not going to be very good shots. And uh, they're too good defensively. So we've got to execute our offense and be patient enough to wait for good shots. Yeah. Well, thank you, Coach. Good luck on the game. All right. Thank you, Jeremiah. And thank you guys for watching or the Outlook.